Hello everyone, I am Prankur Gupta and today we are going to understand strings in Java. Now strings is a vast topic that is why I am covering it into two lessons. Now in this lesson we are going to talk about the allocation of memory of strings, why strings are immutable and what are some functions of strings. Now what are strings? Now guys strings are an array of characters. Now instead of creating separate array of characters, we have a privilege to use string class which have more functionalities to applied on combination of characters now first let us see how we can give memory to string now guys string is a reference data type but we can it can also behave as primitive data type now how as you can see here i am giving memory to string using two methods first is uh, same as that of primitive data type and second is using a uh, new keyword now we know that we can this method is used to give memory to primitive data type and this method is used to give memory to reference data types now this is the exceptional data type which can be used to uh, give memory in both as primitive data type as well as reference data type now what is the difference while we are giving memory like these like this now basically while we are giving using literal or you can say constant it gets memory in string memory pool what is this string memory pool basically we know that we have a heap memory under this heap memory we have some memory called string memory pool in which all the string constants get stored all the string con constants that we will assign in our program will be stored in this string memory pool now here if we are assigning hello world it will get stored in here and a reference s will start pointing to it as we can see here now if we are creating a string using new keyword an object will be created in heap and a reference will start pointing to it but the actual constant this hello world i have already told you all the constants that we will use to create a string will uh, store in string memory pool so this constant will also get memory in string memory pool object is created here but the actual content actual constant will get memory here okay so that is how string gets memory now let us see why strings are immutable now guys strings are immutable immutable means that which can't be changed so if we uh, assign any value to a string its value can't be changed now let us see how if there i now you can see here first i have assigned a value or you can say constant to string hello now in while assigning hello it gets memory in string memory pool now if i want to change value of this string i have assigned it world now instead of instead of changing into this string it creates a separate copy it creates a separate copy and a reference start pointing to it basically here the previously created string didn't get changed it remains there and a separate copy gets created and the reference start pointing to it so it is not a good practice why because guys garbage collection doesn't work in string memory pool so this unreferenced object will never get destroyed as we have already seen in our garbage collection uh, lesson that jvm destroyed all the unreferenced objects now this is an unreferenced object its reference start pointing to some other object so it needs to be destroyed but in string memory pool jvm doesn't work there so that is why string are not memory efficient okay guys so that is why we have some other classes we can we can use uh, which, which are alternative of strings we will see them later but for right now strings are not memory efficient because uh, string constants gets memory in string memory pool and if we want to change our string or you can say uh, we can change we want to change the value of our string then previously declared string will never get destroyed so that is why string uh, strings are not memory efficient okay guys now i hope you get the clear idea why strings are immutable now let us see some of the string functions these are there are a lot of functions of string functions uh, some of them i have covered in this uh, lesson some i will cover in my next video now here first i have declared a string hello world and there is a function called length now this is used to find the length of a string now space is also a character it is also considered as a character so space is also considered as a character character now here we have 10 characters hello and world and sp including space we have 11 characters so if we try to print the uh, length of this string then it will print us 11 okay now 
the other function is char at if we want to find the particular character at in a uh, particular index then we can use this function i mean if we want to find a character at particular index we can use this function it will return us the character if we know the index of some character and we want to know the uh, character if we want to get the that character we can use this function now here i am using as dot char at 4 so it will give me whatever character is present at 4 now index now indexing is start from 0 so at fourth index you can see here uh, o is present 0 at 0 h is present at 1 e is present 2 l and 3 l and at 4 0 is present so it will print 4 okay now if we want to get the index of any character if we want if we know some character and we want to get the that index so we can use this function it will return us int because index is in int form so it will return us the index as you can see here i want to know the index of w so know that here the index of w is 6 why because the index of o is 4 and 5 is for space and 6 is for w so it will print us 6 on screen okay now the other function is which is the overloaded function of this index of we can pass also a string here i mean if we need uh, if i know some substring that i want to find the index so it will print me the starting index of this string i mean llo now where is llo llo is present at third index why it will give us the starting index it will give us the starting index of this string okay so l is present at second index one, zero is pre uh, h is present at zero e is present at one and llo is starting from second index so it will give me the starting index of this string now there is one more overloaded function which will uh, tell us to find a character after a particular index it means i want to find l after fifth index so it will give me here you can see here i am trying to find l after fifth index what is fifth and what is fifth index fifth index is basically this space so it will try to find l after this fifth index so after this fifth index the l is present at ninth index here so it will print us nine okay it will start finding l from after this space okay now there is a function name as last index of actually what does this function do it it starts it actually search the character from the back it starts from the it starts searching the character from the back so basically if we are trying to search l we know that it should return this but it will start searching it from back so it will return us 9 because from 9 from uh, after you know from back the first occurrence of l is at 9 so it will return us 9 okay now there is one more overloaded function of this uh, last index of which is uh, which will accept a character and starting index so if i am telling him to start for uh, to search l from seventh index so it will now what where is seventh index uh, o is 7th index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 0 is at 7th index so it will start searching from 0 sorry o and it will start searching it from right to left so it will print 0 1 2 3 so the first occurrence of l is at 3 so it will print 3 on screen because it will start we know that last index of search from right to left so and we are saying it to start from 7th index 7th in, at 7th index o is present so it will start searching from here and it will goes here and the first occurrence of l is at 3 so it will print 3 on screen now if we want to replace some character with any other character we can also do that now here what i am doing basically here i am replacing l with the star this is old character and it is new character i want to replace all occurrences of l with star so it will be the output as you can see here all the occurrences of l are replaced with star okay now it give us string now as dot replace as dot replace will give a string which is the uh, changed string so we need to put that into a reference so it will give us this output now if we want to convert our string to uppercase we can use this function to uppercase so it will give us our all the characters in uppercase now if we want to convert our string to lowercase we can use this function
टू लोअर केस ओके एंड इफ वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड वेदर द पर्टिकुलर स्ट्रिंग इज प्रेजेंट इन अवर स्ट्रिंग और नोट इफ वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड वेदर पर्टिकुलर सब स्ट्रिंग इज प्रेजेंट इन अवर स्ट्रिंग और नोट सो वी कैन यूज दिस कंटेन्स फंक्शन एज यू कैन सी हेयर आई एम ट्राइंग टू सर्च एफ ओ एफ ओ इज नॉट प्रेजेंट इन माई स्ट्रिंग सो इट विल गिव मी फोज बिकॉज इट रिटर्न गुलियन ओके नाउ वट इज दिस ट्रिम फंक्शन ट्रिम फंक्शन बेसिकली यूज टू रिमूव ऑल द ट्रेलिंग एंड हेडिंग स्पेसिस फ्रॉम द स्ट्रिंग If there are some heading, uh, you know, uh, trailing or heading string uh, spaces, trailing strings are those trailing spaces are those spaces which are uh, at the end of string and heading spaces are those spaces which are at the starting of the string. Now there are no heading and trailing spaces in our string. There are only middle spaces. It will not remove middle spaces. It will only remove heading and trailing spaces. Now there are no heading and trailing spaces, so it will not remove anything. So the output will be same. now here is some misprint okay here should be world not world okay now this is all about guys string functions uh, now in next lecture i will be covering more uh, you know the functions of string and uh, i hope you guys like my video if you like it then don't forget to follow and share this video this is my unacademy profiling thank you guys